Synthesis Strategies with Epoxides. Your synthetic target is a compound that has an alcohol vicinal or adjacent to some other nucleophile. Now this can be done by nucleophilic attack on an epoxide. So the nucleophile attacks one of the epoxide ring carbons, generally the less substituted one, unless you have a tertiary epoxide in acidic conditions. The ring then opens to create an alkoxide, and then we use some weak acid to protonate that alkoxide. So when your synthetic target has another functional group adjacent or vicinal to an alcohol, as in this compound, where you have a nitrile, 1, 2, from an alcohol, consider how this synthesis could be done using an epoxide as a synthetic intermediate. In fact, this epoxide is the direct precursor to the target compound. We would simply react it with sodium cyanide. The cyanide would perform nucleophilic attack, installing the cyanide group on the leftmost carbon and opening the ring Then water or some other weak acid would protonate the alkoxide. How would we make the epoxide? The answer is we could make the epoxide from an alkene either by using a peroxy acid such as MCPBA or we could go through a halohydrin. So, We'd use bromine in water to get the halohydrin. Then we'd use a base like sodium hydroxide to cause an intramolecular Williamson ether synthesis. Just as we use Grignards with carbonyls to install an R group on the same carbon as the alcohol, we can use a nucleophile with an epoxide to install an R group adjacent to the resulting alcohol. Consider the outcome of this reaction sequence. An alkyl halide is first treated with magnesium in diethyl ether. The result of that is reacted with 2-methyl oxirane, and that result is worked up in acidic conditions. What would we get? Let's go through it step by step. In the first step, we form the Grignard reagent, which has a resonance structure that's a carbanion with a magnesium bromide cation. In the second step, our Grignard reagent performs nucleophilic attack on the less substituted carbon of our epoxide, opening the ring. So we now have an alkoxide. And the final step with the acid just protonates the alkoxide. So we do a little proton transfer. And what we've done is we've installed an R group, 1, 2, or adjacent to our alcohol. Let's contrast this with using um, a different electrophile. In step two, what if we used a ketone that had three carbons? So 
So the ketone would perform nucleophilic attack. Sorry, the Grignard would perform nucleophilic attack on the carbonyl carbon, exceeding its octet, creating an alkoxide. And we would then use acidic conditions, or even just water, to protonate that alkoxide. So now, the R group and the alcohol are on the same carbon that was formerly the carbonyl carbon. So instead of 1,2 substitution, it's 1,1. One, one. So just to sum up, the electrophile you use in a Grignard reaction determines uh, some different regiochemistry. If you use an epoxide, your R group ends up adjacent to the alcohol. If you use a ketone, your R group ends up on the same carbon as the alcohol.